Aggie fans still rocking the house here in the spectrum as their Aggies trail by just one at the intermission. First half has belonged to Andre Miller as far as the University of Utah is concerned. And of course, we just go back uh, about seven or eight months against Arizona in the NCAA tournament. Andre Miller, we saw that baseline move tonight. Andre Miller had the terrific NCAA tournament and his numbers against Arizona, 18, 14, and 13. The first player since Magic Johnson to have a triple-double in the NCAA tournament. That goes back almost 20 years. So, uh, you know, he's got a lot of pressure, Frank, as you said, on his shoulders this year, but he seems to be handling it very well. And I think that's a testimony to his maturity and what we've seen, the development. Big three update for Utah. It's really not the big three after this half. It's the big red one. And that one is number 24, 15 points, four rebounds. The other two guys, Jensen and Metal, just haven't done much. Well, you know, they got to get the ball in position. You know, one of the things that you can be patient and you can move the ball around the perimeter. But if you don't end up with a, with a good shot, then all of that is uh, is not worthwhile. And I'm sure that's what Rick has told him. I think you're going to see them run a little bit more. I think you're going to see them get the ball inside a little bit more and uh, and make the patience pay off by getting easy baskets against the zones. Zones work, Steve. Everybody will play them. Is that logical? That's logical to me. Bounce pass inside. That certainly worked for the Aggies on their first possession. Yeah, well, that, that was a, uh, a certainly a scripted play. Well, they you knew exactly what they were going to do, putting the ball in and out of bounds from the side. You give that wide body, even if he is only 6'6", the ball on a low block, and chances are he's going to convert. See, there's the patience. Now you got to get something good, and there's the penetration. That's the kind of shot you want. You get enough of those, you'll win. And Miller retrieves his backcourt. Utah with a new 35. Take a look at the basket, get the defense to come out, but the zone's doing a pretty good job. They're flattened out, they're taking away the paint. Killian still continues to be cold outside, but Utah's Jensen has the rebound and then threw it away. And this crowd is still on its feet, they will be till the Aggies score. Most of those rebounds are taken, you know, with a side that the shot comes from the rebound, usually brought the other side. The post is signal, post, yeah, post five. five from the assistant coach on the Utah State bench, there it is. Well, it means that they're probably going to go inside for the five-man. In this case, that would be Johnson. And there he is. Johnson flashes low. Yep. And Cullen goes with him. Davis dumps off. And there he is. Johnny Johnson. So he's got the four points for Utah State. And he's come out a lot. That was a quick jump, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, he got to the basket fast. What, that's the short synapses in the brain? Is that what that is? That oh, quick? No, I don't either. I don't. And that's what you want to do. You got to get the ball inside. Get right Mettler on the box. Mettler and Miller, they're your best players. Jensen right behind them, and you got to get those guys more shots. See, for, for, for Mettler, they have only five shots. I tell you, you're saying he's only going to get ten shots in the game. Jensen picks off the errant pass, got a trailer, decides to take it himself. Andre Miller, though, ran the floor with it. He had the trailer if he wanted. Oh, it was a lazy pass. And you can't make lazy passes to the wing. He came out, overplayed the wing, stole the ball. Probably Rick Majerus has told him they have time to be more aggressive on the wings defensively. Don't let them have the kind of freedom they would like. You know, Rick's a straight defensive man-to-man -man coach. He'll play zone. He did it a little bit last year. Did a little boxing one. But he doesn't do it until he's sure his team is good defensively first. Man-to-man -man ones. Johnson can't convert his third attempt here in the second half. Good ball movement there. But look at Cullen. They're in a man to man now. See, they're in a man to man on the misses. They play zone after makes. Jensen, offensive board, out of bounds, off. And the official entity looks for a little help. Mm -hmm. Off Utah State, he says. That's Jensen, two of the last three times down the floor, has come up with big offensive rebounds. He's going to find a way to beat you. He's going to find a way to, to, to make his game a little bit better. Metler with a pump fake, and he's in. Metler, two shots in this half, two baskets. I'm sure that Rick looked at the stats and said, we got to get the ball to the big guy a little more often. Utes with the three-point edge, 34-31, just underway. Second half from the Spectrum in Logan, Utah. Steve Brown along with Frank Layden. Glad to have you aboard this evening. In-state basketball. Nothing like it, really, when you think about it, huh? you got to love the rivals. Especially these kids that come from the state and they're going to live here the rest of their lives. Roll. I'll never no. forget this. And a rebound foul, I think, on Hanno Metzola. If that's the case, 
And Hunter's got some foul problems. Number three. Yeah, Medler, uh, he tried to block out. He tried to hold his position, but maybe uh, by extending his legs a little bit. Let's take a look at it here. All right. Here is Medler in here. Now watch how he holds off his man. See if there's a foul here, all right? All right, here goes the shot up. He takes a good position, all right? Now, evidently, the refs thought that he backed in a little bit. Maybe he did. I'm not going to question it. And the uh, game is very, very costly. Third foul. Here's the penetration by Miller. Maybe hold up there. Yeah, good. Since the last couple of times, Miller's tried to take it too far in, Steve. They look inside to Cullen. Cullen has Johnson on his back, and a nice gift to Jensen. Wow, heads up play by the freshman. Yeah, another basket by Jensen in this half, which is more productive him than Metlar have done in Metlar in the first half. And, of course, Stu Morrow wants another timeout, and he is hot. 22nd timeout here brought to us by Mount Olympus Spring Water. Pure and natural, Utah's choice since 1898. Happy 100th to Mount Olympus. Utah on an eight to nothing run, Frank. Here's the last basket and the give from Cullen to Jensen. Well, you know, it's a nice give and go. Always playing basketball. And of course, they finish it off. They don't just take the shot, they finish it off. And that's important. A good extension from Jensen. Protected yep. the ball and at the last minute just lays it up. Yeah, and the pass was away from the defense. Everything was right. The things that uh, Rick Majerus and his team practice every single day and preach. Utes have cracked the 50% uh, mark, 57% in shooting. Utah State, 40% here in the second half. It's so important, Steve, that you don't beat yourself. And in the first half, I got the idea that the Utes, even though they were up by a point, were, were their biggest uh, enemy was themselves. Tough shots, some, some uh, lapses defensively. Johnson up and over a fellow. You know, it's interesting, he almost shoots on the way up. Right? He does. Shooting at his peak. I thought so, too. He, he starts that shot as soon as he brings the ball up from his waist and it's one motion. Yeah. Really unorthodox, but it works. Yeah, especially if you're a little bit smaller. That's it. Bodies in and scores and gets the uh, little friendly roll. Yeah, metler has got three fouls on him, so you want to make sure that he gets the ball, gets some good looks before he, uh, he picks up that fourth foul and or he uh, is taken out for a rest. Post five is the call again. And flashing is Johnson, a low block. Alec pulls it back. And now Tony Brown will bounce pass low to Johnson. He'll work on Cullen, the freshman, and gets the glass, the soft kiss, and gets the basket. You know what impressed me about Brown that time was we know he's a shooter, but that was a beautiful pass inside. Nate Althoff at the scores table set to check in for Utah. It's not unusual, though, for good shooters to be good passes. Skip pass to Jensen. That's another effective pass against his own. Brown bodies Jensen. Jensen leans in, and Cullen can't tip it back. Good effort by Cullen now. Brown looks inside again and decides to swing the ball. Brown. Foul. I think Killian is the offending player. You gotta like Brown's poise for a freshman. Second foul on Killian. And a timeout taken, 14.46 remaining here in this one. It's a three-point Utah lead. Oh, Has eight points for Utah State in the second half, 13 total. He has certainly been a factor. And Hano Mentola, who has the foul problem right now, has got to, uh, hey, look, <laughs> who is that young kid? I'll take him home. I may have to tomorrow. Hano Mentola with six points in the second half, eight total. Well, they're getting the ball to, uh-oh. Uh it's very interesting, a little uh, box and one here, possibly, yes. Yep. All right. Okay, they got they a got box shadow one. roll. Yeah, they got shot on Brown. Uh, Davis hits the basket. Very interesting. I know that uh, Rick Majerus is doing this to protect Metla. something he may have to do this year to protect Mettler and Miller. Sharp. He's not sharp enough on that one. They come the Aggies. They've got numbers. Kick out the ground. This three won't go. Hits the uh, upright and actually hits the wire. This University of Utah game is brought to you in part by AAA. The peace of mind on the road called AAA of Utah. We're always looking out for you. They're the we best. Approach, yeah, they are. As we approach the winter season, can't be without them, let me tell you. 
Alex Jensen back into the lineup. They look to, Je to Metal, a high post, can't find that entry pass. So they go to Metal, at baseline. Little body there. Just disrupted Metal and then out of bounds, two Aggies fight for it, can't pick it up. Yeah, well, it's a hustling thing. You don't mind that you make a mistake, you know, and that ball's tough to handle anyway. The moral calls fist inbounds play. Utah as good as anybody in the country on inbounds plays. Yes, they are. This time they just come out top and they'll reset the offense. 35 second clock again. Great execution on the out of bounds play. As good as anybody you're right, Steve, in the country. I'll talk. Top of the circle, no. Jensen fights for the rebound, but Tony Brown comes out with it. I don't know what's going to happen this ball game. Stu Morrow can be very proud of his team and the way they battle on the boards. They're not going to be uh, out-rebounded by many teams this year, Steve. And, you know, people are going to look at that lineup yeah. size-wise and think, ah, oh, these guys are pushovers on the board. But they're not. Bounce pass from Brown inside. Drops a tough look. Nice yeah, well, you know, a great pass. I'm impressed with Brown's passing. This guy is a true freshman. Wow, he's going to be something. Aggies with the lead, and this crowd is back. And they're letting those five players out there know about it. Utah State on a 6-0 run has taken the one-point lead. Yeah, it's not that the Utah are, uh, are not playing hard. They're very aggressive. They're back in the man-to-man. -man. Just, uh, Rick just gave him a quick look at his own. Frank, you talked about this being the toughest place in the state, maybe, to play. I, this think, building. So. I think it is, too. It's it's what it's the most intimate. The fans are right on yeah. top of the floor. Yeah, obviously, I haven't seen all the high school gyms, but I've certainly in, I've seen, all, I've seen games in all the college uh, gyms, and uh, also seen a few uh, Utah Jazz games. Also. Roll with the finger roll, and the Aggie lead is three. Yeah, you know what? The, the, the drive was excellent, but there wasn't the support defense that should have been there. It should have been help. You can always beat one man off of the dribble. You shouldn't be able to beat two or three. This crowd, a sellout, 10,270 on their feet. A collision underneath, and a whistle of a foul. Miller went down, and so did Roll. And this foul, I think, is going to go against the Aggies. Yeah, Rick Majerus is not satisfied with the uh, tempo uh, his team is showing on offense, so he's going to make some changes here. Coming in, Crockett and Cullen, Miller and Metzler get a rest. So Adam Sharp will move to the point. Yeah, he's sending a message out early in the season. He's, he's not satisfied. Miller, uh, you know, penetrating them, wasn't using good judgment. So he's saying, hey, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to talk to you, you know. you talk to Metzler. And uh, even though you're the, you're the two stars of the team, you've got to uh, show leadership out there. And Rick can do that. And Demetri Yorson comes in, and going out and getting a huge hand is Donnie Johnson. He played a well of the second half. Rick sees the big picture, and that's the whole season. And he knows that during the year, maybe players will get hurt, maybe players will be, uh, be in foul trouble. So he's given everybody a chance to play. So he's got a young team out here now, a couple of freshmen. Learning the ropes. Pretty good ball movement here, too. Cullen spins, and it won't crawl over the rim for him. And Jensen looking at battle in there, and now a foul on the rebound. Uh, Alex Jensen just does scrap it. And I think Yorson will be called with a personal foul. Yeah, by keeping it alive, he caused him to have a foul. Dimitri Yorson is the man who was called with a foul. And a timeout is taken on the floor. It's a three-point Aggie lead and a little over 11 and a half remaining. Don't go away. A lot of balls still to be played. Wednesday, UPN presents a night of prime time that only happens once in a... with the three-point lead, and Frank, our Larry H. Miller telestrator will show you what Utah's doing wrong here. Well, anybody can be beaten off the dribble, all right? So you see a crossover step here and the beginning of a drive, all right? Here it goes, and Miller gets beaten there, okay? That can happen. All right, now what happens? Altov sees the man coming. That's good. 
Medloff sees the man coming. So now defensive preparation should should start here. As the penetration starts, we stop it there. And what happens is neither man came over. What you have to do is you have to step up the lane, all right? And be able to stop those people. And if you just step over, it's not good enough. And well, they're loving it in the uh, Aggie student cheering section here tonight. Jensen holds the ball outside. Andre Miller, who has had no points in the second half. Utah in a three and a half minute scoring drought, and Cullen can't break it. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, in the beginning of this half, the Utes were successful when they got the ball inside, and now they've gone to taking outside shots, and, uh, and it's hurt them. And a foul committed down low again by Utah. Rashad Elliott. A little nifty ball handling on that rebound a moment ago. He ran it between his legs and allowed his teammates to get out in front of him rather than forcing the break with no support. And by the way, Steve, I'll tell you, Utah State's playing very well. I think they're going to have a very nice ball club this year, a very good ball club. They've got a lot of athletes, good depth, and they make good decisions. Another whistle. Brad Crocker was the man who fouled a moment ago, and I think Jensen is the guy now who's going to be tagged with it. So Utah digging itself a hole at the free throw line. That's the fourth team foul. This University of Utah game has been brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines with fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly Southwest Airlines. At the free throw line, Nelson, Spencer Nelson out of Pocatello, just a freshman. A little nervous. Rush that one a little bit. Give him a few games and let him get a few opportunities. That was a violation, lane violation. He's going to shoot it again. And Althoff thought he was being substituted for, so when he saw Metlock coming over, and uh, Metlock coming over, and so he, he sort of dodged out of there. Nelson, uh, uh, take his time. A little, little low trajectory, but you can see the kid's nervous. Just a freshman. Big game. He knows from Pocatello, you know the Utah, Utah State rivalry that far into southeastern Idaho. He didn't take advantage of the extra opportunity. But he'll learn. He's going to be a good ball player. Plays hard. Good ball movement here. And a walk on Andre Miller. Milt Stoll says you drug the pivot foot. I think Andre disputed that one. And now Rick Majerus wants a 20-second timeout to try and settle things well, down. Well, you know, we're going into the final quarter of the game, and uh, Rick wants to make sure this team is in control. This, you know, you can't take it away from Utah State. They're playing very well. And I, th I think we, we have to believe now that uh, when, when uh, Rick told us during the week that uh, his team is young and uh, they haven't, uh, you know, they're learning to mesh, it hasn't quite come together yet. Let's take a look at the uh, traveling violation on Andre Miller and see where we can spot it. Miller gets it. Oh, ooh, I don't oh, know. That was close. I'll I think tell Andre, you. I think Andre had a, uh, yeah. I think he may have had a point there. Incidentally, for the Utes, if you're looking for potential problems here so far in the second half, you got to look at three personal fouls on Jensen. Yeah, the rule is that the ball has to leave your hand before the pivot foot is, is picked up off the floor, and it looked to me like it had. But, hey, I think the referee's doing a pretty good job. Yeah, this is a well-officiated game. Both Jensen and Mentola have three personal fouls for Utah. Nobody on the Aggie team with three. And that was in there, too, intention. No, no use holding him back for the crown. Utah's a straight man to man. No tricks. Going to be three seconds called. Back outside to Rashad Elliott. Good defense now. Very aggressive defense by the Merrill Davis. And Davis walked. He kind of made the turn and ran right into Hano Mentola's belly button. Was not, uh, didn't know that the man was back there. You know, put that hand out, you kind of feel that defender. That time, he didn't, he didn't well, pick up his presence. Know if it, you know, if he walked, I looked like he might have dragged his pivot foot. But certainly uh, not any more than Andre Miller did a couple of minutes ago. Everything works out. Jensen inside, flash, nice pass, can't finish. Yeah, and Utah State was in a straight man-to-man -man there again. Killian the changing made, of defenses have been very effective for them. Killian made the nice pass. Nelson scored. Big basket inside. And Nelson missed those three throws before, but he just made a beautiful play there. Yeah, big-time basket right there. 
gives the Aggies the lead at 43-38. Five point Utah State lead, and again the crowd right back into this one. Both Aggie cheering section, the whole student section behind us, and at the uh, other basket, the West basket, both on their feet. Killian scoops and scores. Nice move by the crowd. Jordan. Yep. Killian made a nice move there. A good, strong move to the basket. Split the defense and took it to the basket. That ends a 10-0 Aggie run, by the way. Yeah, the Utah uh, defense now is very, very aggressive. And sometimes that will cause you to foul. I think Jensen has to come out a little bit more, play Nelson a little bit tougher. Right. Four team foul. Now they're calling post four. So four, not usually your power forward. See what well, happens. That would be maybe Farrell Davis, but let's see. Well, it's telling them they want to go inside, that's for sure. And Nelson kicks it off. Elliott, rainbow shot, won't go. And a foul underneath. Foul against Utah State. Foul gonna be called on number 32 for the Aggie Spencer Nelson. Second personal foul. Not a good shot at that particular time. They show a little more uh, patience. And Yorson will come out. Brown, roll back Brown. in. Roll is back in. And they're back in the zone. And Rick Randall is in for the Aggies, a senior, 6'3", out of Washington, Georgia, back in again. See, I think this is probably a little quicker team that plays the zone a little bit better. Yorson certainly doesn't have much speed, but he has the size. Yes. Right now, speed is probably the uh, best ally the Aggies have. Three-pointer by Miller is good. Something you didn't see on your screen, but that time, as the shot went up, Jeremy Killian released very quickly to get back defensively. Hey, shut up, Montanas! Shut up! Hey, Utah had a five minute, 40 second drought before Killian scored. There's the Andre Miller basket. Discussion going on at the scorer's table between the official Dick Cartmel, Rick Majerus, and Stu Morrill has decided to join in. Maybe, I don't know if they look at foul calls or maybe the foul count because when you get an assistant over there with a clipboard, it's usually a matter of disputing either timeouts or foul foul or timeouts, yes. Hey, you stink! Well, couldn't they use this guy, huh? I'll tell you who could use him. The NBA could use him. He wants to go to work. He told me that about a week ago. He said, man, I'm dying here. Mike, I'll tell you. He, he had a great career at Utah, my uh, girl. Yeah. Great young man. His mother and father enjoyed his career in college. Hey, there's his staff. Yeah, they're checking with us on the foul count right here. Well, the, uh, that, that's the, apparently the, the question. The, the, the official came over to us and asked us about the uh, foul count. That's what the question is at the scorer's table. I believe it's Farrell Davis is who they're disputing or questioning the foul on. Spencer Nelson is who I believe they indicated the last foul was on. But Spencer, uh, but Farrell Davis is the man that I think uh, Rick Majerus feels it was on. All he knows, the uh, chief official, Mark Riesling, came over and said, if you've got a foul count. Well, they might be looking John, at what uh, do we have? whether they're in a penalty or not. Well, we're, we're trying to look at, uh, I think it was 34 that they were looking at. Farrell Davis, we have him with two personal fouls. And that's like the way apparently it's going to stand. I think Nelson got the first personal, so that's the way we had it. Whatever happened, they've satisfied the question. This is the most aggressive defense I've ever seen from the Utes in this ball game. And of course, that goes with good offensive play. You'll always pick up your defensive intensity. And Miller makes a great play there. And the ball, Cullen got, got the ball inside, and it's still loose. Now Cullen retrieves it, and Utah has the yeah, ball. It's a good time. Jensen pulls it back out. So it's good boys. Now they're in the zone again. Met a lot of the big move. Yep. One go. Rebounded by the Aggies. Incidentally, that three-pointer from Andre Miller a moment ago was their first points for Andre here in the second half. He has 18 total. They're going to need his score. Tie game at 43. Seven minutes and 47 seconds left in this one. Ball knocked away by Killian. Keeps it alive. Does a nice job getting past Elliott. Uses his body, shields the ball, and scores. Hits that play. Two big baskets for Killian. The one he drove down the middle before. 
It was a big basket against the zone, and now the steal and basket on the fast break. And he used to have the two-point lead. He's got a good build on him, Kevin. He's a strong-looking young man. And he reminds them a lot of Kate. Yes, I was just going to say that. Peyton from Colorado, yep. wasn't he? Go in there, sacrifice the body. Where's those high white socks, too? Look at it. Yes. And his, his shoes fall off. Time taken on the floor. We'll return to Logan, Utah in just a moment. So, Steve, Utah, has, uh, Utah State has to have a quality possession the next time with the ball because they want to make sure that they keep this close. Utah definitely is starting to turn the momentum here. The intensity level defensively has moved the way up. So I think that Utah State has to get to the foul line now. If they allow Utah to get the ball back, I predict that they'll score. Four field goal shooting percentages continue. Roll, rebound, Nelson. You talked, about, I'll tell you, you talked about it, Frank. Yeah. He missed the uh, free throw, Spencer Nelson, yeah. the freshman, but he has made a couple oh, yeah. of big he's, a, he's a hard worker, the kid. You know what I mean? He missed those free throws because maybe he was a little nervous out there by himself. But when he's in traffic, he's a tough guy. He's going to be a good player. Jensen and Miller. They need to get some offense from the, the two veterans here in the second half. Metzl has been saddled with foul problems. Jensen and Miller have got to go to the basket like that. And that one rejected by Johnson, but stolen right back by Andre Miller. Yeah. Now there's the veteran play. You don't give up. Yep. He stayed with it, took it right away from Allen. Yes, he did. And uh, that was a big turnover because they had just, you know, been deflated a little bit. And so Metzl comes right back in. And drop a basket. nail in on him yep. right there. Hano Metzl up. That was a big basket by Metler because they got a second chance, and that really hurt you. All happens because Miller doesn't give up on after having uh, a shot clock to meet the team. And the Utes with the lead again. Good possession here. Tony Brown struggling. In tonight. and out, though. Pretty good shot, just didn't go down. Here goes Miller penetrating. Oh. And an offensive foul called on Andre Miller. And Rick Majerus is saying, calm down, stay in control. Good advice. Second personal foul for him. It's, it's natural. You're going to see Miller a lot of times. Watch him right here, all right? Makes the bang in there. See it right there. Nice acting job, too. Yeah, it was. It was there was but, contact. But he was out of control, and, and I think that, you know, what Miller has to be careful of this year is that he doesn't try to take over, that he doesn't try to do it all. Right? And, and that, you know, he's mature enough to know that he can't do that. And, and he's going to hurt his he, he's going to hurt his team if he tries to. He's a very very good player. Foul on Killian as Brown went to the basket. You know he's the best player on the team, maybe the best player in the league. But one of the things that makes him good is that he's able to distribute the basketball as well as to uh, shoot it. And if he just makes himself into a scorer, he's going to lose some of his overall effectiveness. That's the third personal foul for Killian as Alec triggers in the roll, quick three point jump shot. It won't go. Yeah, it was a tough shot. Come the Utes. Aggies did a good job getting back that time. Yes, All five did. Aggies. Trailer to Metzler for three. Boy, he's usually deadly that way. Last year, the Utes lived on that with Mike Goliath. Yeah, it's a good shot. But I thought Roll's shot wasn't a good shot. Not a good choice before. Farrell Davis. One shot for both teams. Yep. And two outside shots. This is a time you want to become more conservative, maybe, and see if you can punch it inside. You win by the jump shot, you lose by the jump shot, you die by the jump shot. Metal up. And that's his shot. Put it on the floor once, go straight up, just gonna float. Metal is having the kind of second half that you come to expect of him. He has 12 points. And that four-point lead becomes big. This is a, a very important possession on the part of uh, Utah State. As we approach four and a half minutes, Stu Morrill, Calls the defense, flat three. Yeah, another another basket by Utah to get the six or seven point lead, and that would be a nail in uh, Utah State's coffin. Alec, put it on the floor. Little bunny hop. Scores the basket, Miller commits the foul. That was a big basket. basket. Wow. Third personal foul coming on Andre Miller. 
keep in mind one how uh, Alec uh, was able to cover so much ground. He came to a nice jump stop before he made the thing. Now watch him here. Watch he'll come to a jump stop on both feet and then go make his penetration. And of course Miller couldn't stop because he didn't know he was going to stop there, and he ran into him. And Alec liked it. Yes, he did. And a chance for the three-point play be a big free throw here, and it won't go. Yeah, not as not as really as important as the basket was. Not that every every point at this point in the game isn't important, but you know the fact they didn't get it wasn't. There's still only a basket behind. And Could have gotten it zone. to odd and even. That was the only yes. probably yes. the only thing. Yes. Which may become big, but as long as the three-point shots out there, neither team will have shown the ability to really take care of it or the basketball for that matter. Alec runs. Scores over Metro, so he got it back himself. They look at the man, Metro wouldn't pick up his fourth foul. Then. And of course, the crowd gets into it now. And Stu Morrow Stu says, says it in his own. He's, uh, he's lifting his arms. He wants his crowd up, too. You know, Moby Arena at Colorado State is a pretty good gym. But this crowd's making some awful noise tonight. And Jensen will step the volume level down just a little bit. Yeah, Jensen uh, has played a much better second half. Uh, he's been very selective in his shots. And he took over the responsibility there, the leadership, to say, I'm going to get the next basket. And he did it against his own. Farrell Davis. At some point in time, Stu's, Stu Morrow's going to have to come out of his own and play strictly man-to-man. -man. And he hits it. Three point. That was almost a set shot. He had so much room. He can't back up like that. Got to at least put the hands up. Aggie with the lead. Rick Madrid says, I'll take a 20. What a barn burner. 20 seconds out. Yeah, it is a barn burner. You know, we looked at this coming in. People were saying, hey, even people in Logan were saying to me today, you uh, probably ought to run over us on this one. You pointed out it's well, an early season game. Yeah. You, neither team has early come together. Early season game, Steve. And also, we have to think about the fact that the, the polls, everybody reads the polls, says Utah must, you know, must be great because they're basing it on what they did last year. This is a different team than we saw last year. In some aspects, maybe better, but in other aspects, not as good. Here's a look at that last basket of three four. Look at, look at the room that Andre's given him, and not a hand up even. And Alex says, hey, oh, you give me that, I'll that, put it down. That happens in the early season, too, because you don't realize that how good an outside shooter he is. You realize he makes a few of those, play this game later yeah. in the year, you outplay him, play up on him. Yeah, you can bet next time he won't have that kind no. of pushing. Utah has two full timeouts left, the Aggies two plus the 20. Now yeah, watch a set play now. Rick Majerus is time out. They're going to go inside, I believe. Aggies, a lot of fouls to give. Only three team fouls, too. Utes with seven. Shot clock the coach for 10 seconds. 10 on the shot. And a three-point basket. Wow, that's huge. Another big basket by Jensen. And it gets it back to even-even at 54-52, so we're on even numbers. Yep. Nearing two and a half. Great college game. What a great way to start the season. Round three. Oh, what a time to bring it out. That's what a time for Tony That's what he said before the game. He wants the basketball. He wants to shoot the basketball. He's got a shooter's mentality. A scorer's mentality. I don't know, that's a two-point shot short. Aggies with the ball in the lead. Nearing a two-minute mark. A full timeout, says Stu Morrow. He wants to talk this one over. Full timeout taken by Utah State. They have the ball. They have the lead. And we'll be back in a moment. Tony Brown, the freshman. What do you say to a shooter? Let her rip. Southwest Replay shows moments ago the freshman Tony Brown from nearby Mountain Crest High School in Hiram watched the catch and shoot. He gets it one step. The old cowhide globe, as Hot Rod would say, hits home. And Frank, that's just a sweet touch. Well, he caught the ball. He, uh, he got it up to his uh, shooting area right away. He squared his shoulders on the basket. He's got all the tools to be a great shooter, Steve. You're hey, right for the game. Hey, if you like this one, you're going to love the next one, our next television game, December 5th. The youths go to Long Beach State to take on the 49ers. Join us December 5th, 8 p.m., right here on KJAZZ TV. But, hey, we've got well, 205, 206 remaining in this one. You know what I like about Brown? He's got a good upper body, and he's got strong legs, all right? You see his muscles in his, in his calves. 
that that projects when he catches the ball, he's ready to shoot. He faces the basket. He's got good coaching at the high school level, Steve. Frank, how important the next two minutes for the Utes defense? Well, I'll tell you, very important. They want to. They not only want to hold uh, uh, the Aggies down, but they don't want to foul. It's got to be good, tough defense, and there's good, tough defense in there. They, they don't want to necessarily make a steal. They want to cause them to take a tougher shot than they want. Well, they committed the foul inside. Well, you know, Stu Morrow did a good thing in the timeout. He said, you got to get the ball inside. No more outside shots. You don't need any more outside shots. What you got to do is get the ball down on the box. And that was interesting because they took it from the opposite side. You don't see that very often, Steve, is they took it from the opposite side and put it into the box, all right? They, and usually you do it from the strong side. I don't know, maybe sometime later we can take a look at it at the uh, with the telestrator. And they've got Johnson, who's three of, uh, of five, Tonight, six of nine on the season at the line. Big free throw. I don't like how this guy looks as a foul shooter, but he's an 80% foul shooter, so he must be pretty good at it. It's like his like style. You yeah. know, he does the same thing. The jump shot, he shoots it on the way up. Yeah, they both on it. Yeah, I mean, if you, it doesn't matter if you do something wrong. If you do it long, uh, enough, maybe it makes it right. So I don't like how it looks. It's an ugly shot, but he makes it. Three point lead. I bet the Utes didn't like how it looked either that time. Oh, we've got a minute and a half game now, a three point lead. At home. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Home. Oh, sure. One shot. Cullen, two-pointer. Well, he's missed that all night. He's been had tough looks from the corner. Yeah, well, I don't know if you want the freshman taking the shot. Right Inside, now. Johnson. Rejected foul. Foul called on Jensen, I believe. Could have gone either way, Cullen or Jensen. Four personal fouls on Jensen. There it is, Farrell Davis. No call there. Probably a good no call. And then here, yeah, Jensen from the front, Cullen from the back. Yeah, see, I don't know, you know, not, not it wasn't a good shot, but I don't know if you want the first one. Taking uh, an important shot like that, you know, with a minute and 25 seconds, uh, when you have a Mettler and a Miller out there and a Jensen. We'll take a break. We'll return for the last one minute and 12 seconds. But now the Aggies like their chances. Not as good as the guest bag. Well, this is a great learning process for both teams. Utah State, new coach, uh, new enthusiasm here, sellout crowd. It's great for the Aggies. Now you take the University of Utah. They got some young people. They're trying to get them to, to mesh together. So uh, it's a great learning experience for them. Farrell Davis at the line. With his second shot, and it sneaks in as well. Now the lead is five. Yeah, now it makes it a two possession game. Sense of emergency now. Yes, you got to get the ball up twice. And this press. Yes. You know, well, Mantle should have put that ball on the floor. Yeah, it was, uh, this was very effective uh, earlier in the game, and Stu Morrow comes back with it again. you got to give uh, Stu. He's done a good job. Rick Majerus has te his team ready. Stu had his ball club ready, too. Now, we talked about it in the pregame show, this being the first real test of the year really for both teams. But haven't you seen this so many times in football, basketball? I mean, you know, there's Metlar on a big shot. And a big rebound by Farrell Davis. This is also following back court. Neighborhood rivals, the upsets. You know what I mean? We're going to have another one this weekend in football with BYU and Utah. And Alex Jensen has fouled out Nate Althoff. I've been on defense. both ends of these. I've been, I remember when I was coaching Niagara, I used to play at Buffalo State, which was a Division II school. They'd beat us once every five years. And that, that was a killer. I mean, you know, that made up for the other four times we beat them. And, but that's great. It's great for basketball. It's great for, for area basketball. It's great for high school basketball in the area. Even though we don't like to see Utah uh, necessarily lose. Farrell Davis, who's been perfect at the line, remains so. And Alex Jensen left with 11 points for Utah. But now, they, you know, the University of Utah is going to have to reaffirm their commitment. They come into this ninth in the country, a 10-point favorite, on the road. Not realistic, Steve. We said that at halftime. We said, I didn't think that was realistic. That was based too much on people that didn't see this team uh, and saw them a year ago. It's and it's not fair to the kids, and it's not fair to the... Uh, for the players or the coaches. And as a 20-second timeout taken on the floor, Utah State on a 7-0 run, Frank, and they lead by that seven points. 
On Olympus Spring Water, bringing you this 20-second timeout. And right now, you probably need one of those drinks. And the biggest, the biggest shot of all was that shot by the freshman Brown. Yeah, it was. The three-pointer, he yeah. came right across the lane, catch and shoot. And you know, what a time to bring it out, because he had struggled with the yes. shot all night long. You know, you said it earlier, Frank, that the people having the most fun were the cheerleaders. Yes. And they are. When I come back in my next life, I either want to be a cheerleader or a uh, mascot. Both teams with one full timeout remaining, but this foul situation, of course, Utah with the 10 personal fouls, or 10 team fouls, rather, and just three for the Aggies. I definitely don't want to come back as a referee. <laughs> or even a coach, right? I'm a coach. I'd like to have your job. Look at this, the 26 a game home winning streak. <laughs> 26 home game winning streak. Uh, it looks like it's going to stay intact right now. Well, obviously, it tells you they're pretty good at home. Doesn't matter who coaches. Nice win for Skumaro, huh? That's a shot block. Out of bounds. He's trying to change possession. I'll tell you one thing. I know that the University of Utah State has quicker athletes in some positions. Here's a look at the block yeah. again, coming over late, but making the block is Davis, and gets a piece of Metal's ball. Three-pointer air ball from the corner, out of bounds, off the Aggies. Utah still has a basketball. And the official just ran over to say no new shot clock, didn't touch anything. Heads up play. Officiating crew's done a nice job. They have done a nice job. They've let them play. And I think that's been to the advantage of the Utah State. But they haven't let the game get out of no, hand. No, they haven't. Mental is three, in and out. Sometimes it just won't go down. Killian pulls down an offensive board, goes off an Aggie. Killian's going to be a good player. You you used the right guy as his example of who he looked like. That was a guy that got played for two years ago. Ben Casey. Similar build. He'll get a little taller. And he's not afraid to shoot it. No, he puts it up there. I Rebound. thought before he used poor judgment on one of his shots, but nothing wrong when he did that. And Andre Miller came in to try and make the steal. Crowd wanted uh, more than they got. They got a foul, but that was, there was nothing. That's the fourth on Miller, by the way. Nothing flagrant about that. Miller just tried to sneak back in and grab the ball. That's a competitor. Both teams have played hard and played clean tonight. Yes. Good ball game. So with 6.1 seconds left, that man is going to have his first victory over Utah in a long, long time. Johnson, 6 of 9, field goals. And at the line tonight, just missed a couple. He's not going to miss this one. He's 6 of 8. And he misses one. Short arm that one a little bit, but it becomes moot. Miller, three-pointer won't go, and it's over. It's over in the spectrum. Utah State continues their home game winning streak, and this floor is bedlam as the stands have emptied, but the Aggies have beaten the ninth-ranked Utes 62 to 54, and you think they you just won the national guy, yeah. championship. Well, you know what? That shows how much respect that the student body here and the community has for the Utes. Yeah, you think this is not a program that looks at the rivalry, and it's like, you know, that's the biggest compliment you can probably pay a program is to react like this when you beat them in a non-league fashion. So congratulations to the Aggies, and Utah doesn't get to rest very much. They'll go back and retool on this one. Stu Moore leaves the floor with the home game winning streak still intact. We'll be back to put a wrap on this one in just a moment.